Tammy Kaster is an average woman from Peterborough, Ontario. She's a mom and a wife making an income as a nurse. But in 2013, she got the opportunity of a lifetime. She packed her bags and left the comforts of home, flying to one of the poorest countries in the world. I was able to go to Liberia twice. I've been there in May of 2013. And then I was lucky enough to return in February of 2014. These trips changed her life. She was exposed to a new world and culture completely different from everything she knew back home. The people of Liberia had next to nothing, yet remained positive and focused on what they did have, remaining thankful for everything given to them. She's formed long-lasting friendships and eternal bonds. Recently, however, Liberia and the surrounding countries have been plagued with a terrible and deadly Ebola outbreak. We went into her home and asked her a few questions to see what she thought of the situation. With the Ebola outbreak in Liberia, almost everybody I've spoke to has been affected in some way. Nobody I know has actually contracted the disease and become ill. However, one of my closest friends from Liberia sent me a message just last week and a fellow that he was very close to had um, died and the sad part is that the same fellow was married with a child and because of the Ebola the baby which was only a few months old was first to be sick and um, then the mother-in-law his mother-in-law became sick and then just last week both him and his wife died so the whole family of four um, died from the virus. On August 1st, 2014, Liberian President Ellen Johnson Sirleaf declared a state of emergency. This has caused closure of schools, travel restrictions, and curfews. So as far as the people I know being affected, then nobody thankfully has gotten sick, but it's been really traumatic for them losing people that they know and being concerned about their families. There's one fellow that um, actually wrote to me the other day and he told me that he wished he could figure out how to get his son to Canada because he only has one son and when he sees the people that come into his community and they're the ones that are retrieving the dead bodies, he said he was so fearful for his family. Even though these people go through so much fear and heartbreak every day, there is still hope that they can survive this epidemic. When they did speak about the Ebola, there was a lot of focus on the doctor and the missionary that came back to the United States and were able to survive. And I enjoyed that coverage. I thought that they were covered well and those things were important because they gave hope that with proper care, you can survive the Ebola. One of the things that I find so heartbreaking is that in this, these countries, there's so many people that live in the rural communities and they really haven't had any chance to be educated in the virus or to be knowledgeable about people trying to help them. Imagine being a mother and having a sick child and handing them over to these people you don't know dressed in these crazy outfits and they take your child to help them and the problem is most of the people coming out of these places aren't alive they're not surviving and um, you're basically knowing that giving this child up that, that you may never see them and you can't even be around them while they're sick and so I think a lot of people uh, because of their limited education are keeping their sick ones with them which isn't good because it just keeps passing the germs on to each other and they're keeping them in the community. I saw a terrible clip and I understand it. They came over, there was a team that was trying to help a clinic, I think is what they were doing, but what I saw was them taking a patient that was either suspected to have Ebola or had Ebola, and it was a gentleman, and they were in their suits, and, and they put him in the back of like a pickup truck, 
and it was so strange that they'd have to force this guy who didn't want to go with them but they had to keep him away from the healthy people so they put him in the back of this pickup truck and and I just it was bizarre it didn't even feel like it was like something you'd see in a movie and I just found that so heartbreaking As far as the media coverage of this Ebola virus, I think there is a lot of reporting that's accurate and it's, you know, there's been reporting from the any kind of thing that the WHO has had to say, the World Health Organization. You know, they've put out a lot of warnings about how they're afraid this is really going to spread quickly and they have made a lot of predictions. They've also said that there seems to be very little support coming in from the world and that there needs to be more support from other nations because these small countries just have no capability to handle it. On September 16, 2014, U.S. President Barack Obama announced that he would be sending military into Liberia. So I think there's been good coverage as far as just the statistics that's coming out of the WHO. However, I don't feel there's been a lot of coverage from the ground. And I think that's because there's hardly any reporters there. I heard there was one Canadian reporter in Sierra Leone and she came out of Sierra Leone just feeling completely pessimistic and felt this feeling of doom. Unfortunately, in a nation like Liberia, the people are often desperate and can take any chance they can to make money. Because of this, prices of food and supplies have skyrocketed. There was this group that was going around putting formaldehyde into the clean drinking waters. They arrested people and they said that they were speculating that it was up to a government official had put them up to that because the symptoms were similar to Ebola and that way it made it look like the virus was worse and more money would come into the country so the people of Liberia are very untrustworthy of their government and a few of them even deny that the Ebola is even there. Some of them think that it's just a completely made up thing by the government but all that is based on their history and how the government has really deceived them so much in the past. Due to the lack of flights and boats coming into the country, organizations that carry much needed supplies can't get in and delivering supplies is near impossible. I think that there's a need for a bit of support financially for food and for sanitation supplies to um, ensure that they're able to properly wash their hands and have things available to them for those needs. I'm really looking forward to having a fundraiser and that we can raise some money uh, because I do have a personal contact in Liberia and it's a great way to ensure that the money get directly to the people in need. The reasons that I would really like to contribute and to raise some money to send over um, to Liberia is because I had such a uh, great opportunity to meet some wonderful people that have become very important to me and that I'm fortunate enough to keep in contact with. These people already had a life that was very hard. Um, they had limited water. Very few of them had any kind of hydro and um, to have something like this on top of everything else it has made their life even more complicated. The thing is that we live in a community and in a country where we have so many things at our fingertips. We have access to clean water, we have access to hydro, we have access to great medical conditions. So we really can't understand how these people feel about having to live in the fear of getting sick and not being able to seek out help when it's a disease that is killing 60 to 80 percent of the people. Uh, you know, it's pretty tough going to bed every night afraid of something like that.